It's said that the divorce rate in the U.S. has increased dramatically since the movie was released. What kind of extramarital affair makes audiences cry? Francesca and Michael have been married for almost 20 years and have a son and a daughter. Michael took the kids out for four days to compete. These four days were a rare moment of freedom for Francesca. On that first day, a photographer asked for directions to Roseman Bridge. Francesca kindly told him how to get there. As the road to Roseman Bridge is quite winding, she offered to lead the way when it was difficult to explain in simple terms. They chatted briefly in the car. Robert was from Washington State and had been married before. Francesca was from Bari, a remote town in Italy. Coincidentally, Robert had been to Bari for a photo shoot. Francesca was very excited. It was the first time she'd met anyone from her native land. Robert said he was supposed to be traveling through Bari, but when he saw the amazing view from the window, he got off the train and stayed for a few days. When he got to the bridge, he looked around. It wasn't a good day, so he was going to shoot tomorrow. Francesca went up to the bridge to peep at him through a crack. When Robert spotted her, she had to pat her cheeks to get rid of her inner heat. But when she turned her head, she thought he'd disappeared. It turned out he was picking wildflowers to thank Francesca. Francesca joked that they were poisonous. He was so scared, he let go. Francesca couldn't help but laugh at his antics. On the way home, she thought she'd left him forever. But when she got out of the car, she turned around and invited Robert over for iced tea. And the two of them drank tea and talked. Robert was a drifter. He went where the work was. And Francesca was an ordinary housewife who did the laundry and the cooking for the family. She lived in one place for so long, she was used to stability and afraid of change. The biggest change came when she met Michael in Naples and followed him to Iowa. Michael was hardworking, caring, honest and a good father. Iowa was also a good place to live, with friendly people, but it wasn't the dream she'd had as a teenager. The repetition of data to day, life had dashed her desire to leave her dream. Francesca's eyes fell when she said that. Robert didn't think she was afraid of change. Her move from Italy to Iowa was a big change. He thought of the poem he'd written a few days before, about how dreams are beautiful dreams that are gone, but were once had. Both of them were a little tired of it. Francesca invited Robert to dinner. Robert gladly accepts. He was washing his body in the yard. Francesca watched him from afar through the window, but she quickly turns around and wonders what's wrong with her. Five seconds later, she couldn't help but return to the window and watch him. Then she put on her earrings. Robert helped her cook. Francesca's heart skipped a beat at that brief brush. At night, Robert told her funny stories. Francesca laughed her head off. She hadn't laughed so hard in a long time. She'd been a teacher, but she'd been forced to return to her family because she was pregnant. That's what her husband Michael wanted. Robert felt pity for her. He could see that Francesca missed teaching, but Francesca didn't want to talk about it too much and insisted that Robert continue the story. It reminded Robert of his most memorable trip. It was in Africa, where the landscape was natural and real, where there were no imposed morals, a paradise of freedom, and Francesca was very much in love with it. When Robert read Yeats' poem, Francesca's heart fluttered. Yeats was her favorite poet, but with a cane peg. She was a married woman, and taking a strange man home and falling in love with him could be tantamount to cheating on her husband. Robert, sensing her concern, said that we had done nothing wrong, and that there was nothing you couldn't say to your children. Francesca saw Robert off and Saturday alone in the hallway with her Yeats book. She hoped the evening breeze would dissipate her inner turmoil, but it didn't. She went to the mirror and looked at her body. Although she had given birth to the children and was no longer young, she still had the desire. She turned around and wrote a note and drove to Roseman Bridge and posted there. The next day Robert saw the note and called Francesca. Francesca was still on the tractor outside the house. When she hears the phone ringing, she dashes into the house to calm her beating heart. She picks up the phone excitedly, but says hi. Pretending not to care, Robert reads a note with a poem by Yates asking him to dinner. He's still taking pictures, so he'll be late. He invited Francesca to join him at the bridge. Francesca agreed and went to buy food for dinner. When she passed a clothing store, she bought a dress as she hadn't bought anything new for a long time. When she got home, Robert called. He wondered if the meeting should continue. He met Betty at lunch. Betty's affair with a married man was frowned upon by many. The waitresses were not very nice to her. He's worried about the repercussions for Francesca. Francesca was even a little stirred by his thoughtfulness. She realized the consequences of this meeting, but she found the courage to do it. Robert, I want to come. On the bridge, 
Robert was concentrating on photographing the scenery. As he did so, he came up to Francesca and photographed the woman who had captured his soul. Their heartbeats rose with the sound of the shudder. In the evening Robert took a bath and then helped Francesca set the table. Francesca felt a strange sensation when she stepped into the bathtub. She felt aroused at the thought of the water running over Robert's body a few minutes before. She changed into the new dress she bought during the day. Then the two of them embraced and danced to the music and naturally had sex. Francesca asked Robert to take her away, to take her to the other side of the world. She asked him to tell her more about Bari. She was already in tears listening to the stories. She felt deeply that Robert was another her. Who could read her every thought? Francesca could be her true self in front of him. On the third day, they decided to go to a remote place, away from all the familiar people and things. Francesca gave him a necklace with her name on it. Robert took the necklace and kissed it. Then they continued to kiss. The fourth day began with breakfast, as if they were an ordinary couple. Separation is a painful process that one has to undergo in life. Francesca was already in a panic, thinking she was one of Robert's countless sexual encounters. He was used to being adrift, and he certainly wasn't used to her. While he was experiencing the world, she was stuck at home, sitting at the dinner table day after day. Robert thought she was anxious because she was married and didn't want to leave her husband. I don't want to need you because I can't have you. Francesca was saddened to see the hurt in Robert's eyes. Maybe the only reason he was photographing was to come to her. Everything he'd done in his life had led him to Francesca. Robert wasn't as aloof as Francesca thought he was. He loved her because she was Francesca. He wanted Francesca to come with him. After dusk, Francesca was in the house. Packing, they had their last dinner together. Francesca thought long and hard about her choice. Because whatever she chooses, she'll be hurting people. Her family would be surrounded by gossip. Her husband would be devastated. When he had done nothing wrong, she'll be absent from her children's lives. And she'll even traumatize them. She'll be miserable and then she even began to blame her for falling in love with Robert. Even though it was a wonderful four days. In other ways it wasn't. Robert didn't understand her. Many people go their whole lives without finding this kind of love. So why should they give it up? Francesca said that when a woman gets married and has children. In one way her new life begins. In another way it stops. She can't leave her life anymore and she doesn't remember what keeps her alive. This time Francesca chose family. Robert understands how hard it is for her. He would stay here for a few more days to wait for Francesca to change her mind. Without looking back, he quickly disappeared into the night. Francesca rushed out of the house and stared down the road at him as he drove away. On the fifth day, Michael and the children returned home. Francesca wiped the tears from her eyes and forced a smile on her face. Her familiar life was back. The last four days had seemed like a dream. She forced herself to stay busy, so she wouldn't have time to think about the freedom she'd felt. Until the day she and Michael went shopping and turned around to see a familiar car and familiar man. Robert, walking toward her in the rain with a determined look in his eyes, Francesca just looked at him and smiled. As if saying goodbye, Robert's car stopped right in front of her at a red light. Francesca watched through the window as he hung her necklace from the rearview mirror. She thought of his hand brushing against her leg a few days ago. Michael looked at the car in front of him with a Washington license plate and knew it was a photographer who had recently come to town. The light's green and the car in front of him hasn't moved. Michael wondered what the car was waiting for. Francesca's right hand is on the door handle. All she had to do was push it open and she was on her way. As she hesitates, Robert drives away. He chose to walk away from Francesca in the opposite direction. She turned her head and looked at him until she could no longer see him. Then she lowered her head weakly and let go of the doorknob. Something so certain only happens once in a lifetime. She cried uncontrollably. Michael asked her what was wrong. Then he turned on the car stereo. She lived the rest of her life as if it were nothing. Francesca and Michael were in love until the end of their lives. On his deathbed, Michael said he was sorry he hadn't been able to fulfill her dream. He really loved Francesca. After Michael died, Francesca searched for Robert but couldn't find him. All she could do was visit the place where she used to date Robert on her birthday every year. Until the day Robert's lawyer sent her a package containing his belongings. He left it all to Francesca and scattered his ashes at Roseman Bridge. When Francesca died, she asked her children to scatter her ashes under the bridge. Two, she gave her life to her family and the rest of herself to Robert.